Hi, this is Chris German. Welcome back to The Apartment Dealer Show. Today we're starting a new series, a renovation series, on a property that I just purchased, seven unit multifamily property. And we're gonna walk you through the stages of giving the notices to vacate, because we're vacating the entire property, on to demo, improvement, picking finishing materials, to what are the final rental rates, and then ultimately what is the property's value at the end of this project. This property was purchased under the guise of renovate it and sell it. This is not a long-term hold. Now, when I took on the property, uh, the rental rates were about 50% below market rate. That's why it's subst the, the uh, substantial renovation is substantiated because when we did the analysis between the current rent that the tenants were paying and the potential market rent that we could obtain at the end of the project, it definitely made sense for us to take the property in this direction or we probably wouldn't have purchased it in the first place. Seven units, all single story, bungalow, cottage style, large lot. Uh, six of the seven units are two bedroom, one bath. One larger unit is three bedroom, two bath. They all have garage parking. And we look to improve the units, touch those items that are gonna move the needle in terms of the rental rate. So it's not just about beautifying the property for the sake of making it look pretty. The idea is what items do we need to improve to meet and fulfill the letter of the law under substantial improvement uh, under AB 1482, uh, statewide rent control. And at the same time, what items uh, are most meaningful to the tenants? How do we modernize the unit, use the right finishing materials, add items such as AC units and what have you, washer dryer hookups, those items that the tenants are looking for and the particular type of tenant that we're looking to attract to our units who ultimately are the ones that have the money to pay the rental rates that we're looking to uh, obtain at the end of this project. So start to finish, we're gonna walk you through every step. At the end of the project, you'll decide for yourself, was this ultimately a winner, loser? Would you have done it differently? Did this make sense? And does this fit the profile of a project where we talk about pillar one of the financial legacy, maximization, taking a look at what you currently own, building the value from within by touching those items that move the needle in terms of the rental rates to what? To increase the property's value, increase your equity so that you have that much more opportunity once we sell this property, do a 1031 exchange, we have that much more opportunity, that much more equity to roll into pillar two, growth, and on and on we continue. So let's go take a look at the property. So this is her. We have uh, uh, seven units, all single story construction. Each are individual uh, cottage style bungalow type units. Um, any connection between the two units is only because there's a connection uh, with parking, the garages, and you'll see that. Uh, so we're gonna walk you through one of the layouts. They're essentially all the same, six of the units are all the same, two bedroom, one bath, one unit, is a three bedroom, two bath. Um, but we're gonna show you a layout of a two bedroom, one bath. This is gonna be the before. And then of course, we'll be walking you through the project as we go through demolition and so forth. So let's take a look. One of the main reasons that we have to dig into these properties and, and uh, why it warrants a substantial improvement is because the electrical panels are actually recalled. And I would suspect many of you watching still have these type of panels, um, but these are Zinsco pan panels, Z-I-N-S-C-O, Zinsco panels. The issue with these panels that they have found is that uh, even though the circuit may be overloaded, the breaker doesn't trip, hence you might get an electrical fire. So this is one of the main reasons that we had to do a substantial improvement and go through the units is because we're upgrading the panels. With that comes the wiring and everything else, but we'll head inside. Okay, as I mentioned, two bedroom, one bath. Uh, good size living room. These units are good size. The layouts are good. We like the layouts. Um, obviously, this is all gonna get changed over. Um, 
Some of you may be looking at the video as we go through it and saying, hey, why don't you just paint the unit? That's not how we go about things. Um, so all this tile will come up. Uh, this wall heater, which is here by Matt, uh, this is gonna come out because we're actually going to put a dual unit. We're gonna take out that old unit and we're gonna put in a dual unit, uh, heating and air conditioning, and that'll serve as the heating for the unit. And by eliminating that, it just modernizes, modernizes the unit. And if you've seen any of our projects, you know we're gonna get rid of these old style plugs, these old style switches, and we're gonna go with something that is more modern, the Cora style plugs and switches. Uh, this ceiling fan, while not bad, that's gonna go because it's not gonna work with our color scheme. And what's gonna happen here is you'll notice that this opening is fairly small. The opening on the other side is fairly small. I don't know how anybody gets a refrigerator in here. I mean, I imagine you have to go out the back door. So essentially we're gonna chop this to about yay. And when we're with the contractor, we'll give you some actual measurements if you care to know. Um, because having this pass through isn't as important as having it look more open. So we're gonna, again, chop it back to about here. Uh, and then when we build out the, the cabinetry, uh, this will become a larger uh, uh, pantry uh, with a cupboard over uh, the refrigerator. Uh, once we cut this back, and we'll have Matt swing around here so you can see, the stove will obviously will go here because this is our gas connection. And then we're gonna put an over the head or over the range microwave with vent and make sure that vents outside. And then of course, all this tile, all this cabinetry, the sink, everything will get yanked out. It, the layout will be very similar to what you see here when we're done. The only thing is this cabinet will get eliminated because this, we're gonna make hookups for stackable washer and dryers. Right now it only has hookups for the washer. Um, we're gonna have to pull the gas line. Luckily the gas meter is just outside and the water heater. Um, so we can tap into the gas line, bring it overhead, drop it down, have our gas for the dryer. Um, and the water heater, as I just mentioned, has already been moved outside. So this cabinetry gets reworked. What they did prior, and it wasn't a bad thing, was that they just moved the water heater outside. Better to do that than have them inside the units for carbon monoxide risk. And just in case if, it, if the thing breaks and floods your unit, we have a patio, just move it outside. But you'll see that uh, the plumbing is still there. So we're gonna take that up through the roof and outside so that this becomes all open space. Storage, when you have the ability, storage means a lot to tenants, especially if they're living in an apartment. So we try to make as much storage as we can. So we'll uh, make that a wider, uh, cat or we'll make the opening larger so that they have full space, full access. Uh, as I mentioned, all the tiles are going to come up. And as we come into the bathroom, this is all got to go, including the tub. So we're going to remove the tub, take all the tile out. Uh, when we come back, it, we will fully tile the shower, new fixtures, new flooring, new vanity, new toilet. We will put, there's no exhaust fan. There should be, it's very easy uh, because again, we're single level, there's an attic space. So we'll tap it uh, to the plug. That's one thing I'll note is with your exhaust fan, you don't wanna have it on the independent switch and give the tenant an option to turn it on because lo and behold, they won't and it's useless, you wanna tap it so that it comes on with the light. Typically when we set up the lighting, we have um, two switches. One that's a light, recessed light uh, over the shower. The second switch would be uh, the light that turns on uh, the lighting here over the vanity and then the exhaust fan itself. And like I say, then that exhaust fan will exit uh, out there that direction. This here is a good broom closet. 
Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll make sure that it fastens right now. It doesn't close tight. Uh, we'll change out the hinges, um, probably like to a silver or a black, change the uh, knobs here, and pretty much that'll stay the way it is. The other thing I should mention too is we're going to take down all the acoustic. So uh, again, that's ancient. It makes your unit look ancient. And so we're going to get, we're going to scrape the ceilings. The kitchen has already been scraped, but everything else looks like has the acoustic. So we're going to scrape that, make sure we have smooth ceilings. Um, the walls, the texture is fairly flat. Uh, again, flat is what's in right now. And so that, as opposed to texture, when you do drywall work and what have you, your contractor will tell you, Hey, well, let's, let's put, uh, you know, some texture on the wall. That all that does in the end is hide imperfections for the contractor. It makes his life easy when they're taping and mudding the drywall. They're able to cut corners because the texture is going to uh, cover it up. That's not modern. That's not going to benefit us when we um, look to rent to the type of tenant we're looking to that wants a modern unit. Now you'll see this closet here. This actually will stay. And so I said that backwards. This will stay and we're going to change out the hinges and the knobs. This actually is going to get eliminated. The reason why this gets eliminated when you step inside, I believe what we're going to do here is we're going to widen the uh, closet opening. And essentially what we do is we put in two sets of sliding doors, a his and hers. Um, we'll leave this storage. Actually, the storage will get eliminated. So it's going to go from floor nearly to ceiling. We'll give them a shelf or two up top. And again, this will be sectioned off into two closet space. We have found in our other units that that's attractive to the tenants. Um, because again, one person has their space. Another person has their own space with the mirrored wardrobe doors. We will put an AC unit in here, either here or there, depending what our contractor would like to do. Um, and new switches, plugs, recess lighting, eliminate that fan, we'll bring in a new fan. And the second bedroom, uh, pretty much the same idea. So this closet space may stay this width, um, when we may need to keep it this width if we want to keep the a storage there in that common area. Um, but we will take it taller and it'll be new wardrobe, uh, glass wardrobe doors with a shelf uh, for storage above. Eliminate this fan or change out the fan, I should say. Recess lighting. And then we will put an AC in here, um, probably on this wall because this is somewhat narrow. And I believe uh, there's nothing on the other side of this wall because it's a detached unit. So we probably will go there. That'll give us the option of a bigger unit. AC uh, in this part of town is important. It gets quite hot uh, during the summer. In my old remodels from 10, 12 years ago, we used to not put ACs, just put ceiling fans. In hindsight, that probably was a bad idea. Uh, so now we put ACs in all the units. I failed to say we will change out uh, this back door. Uh, that back door is just not very aesthetically uh, appealing. And if you've seen some of our other videos, we go with a newer style door that actually has the blind in the door and, it, and the blind sits on the track. It's, it's the blind itself. The mini blind is between the panes of glass so the tenant can't screw it up. And there's a little slider here so you'll get to see what that's all about. Some other additional items we're going to do to the unit, if I already didn't say, is the recess lighting is going to be everywhere. I know I pointed out in a few rooms, we're going to put, we're going to put recess lighting throughout the entire unit. We will be changing out all the windows. Um, I already mentioned we're going to change out the back door, front door. Uh, I believe that will stay. And let's take a look in the backyard to see what, if anything, has to be done here. Okay, so uh, obviously we're gonna get rid of all the debris. 
there's not much that we believe we have to do back here. Uh, a small item, but just because I don't like the idea, is that this gas line is away from the wall, comes through here, it actually drops on the floor, and so what they must have done is, there must have been a dryer in this garage before, obviously without permit given the way this looks. So we're going to eliminate that gas line, um, either cap it or use uh, uh, at least where it comes out of the gas meter to then carry our gas into the unit for our new dryer inside. Um, the water heater, we hope it's in good shape. If it's in great shape, then we'll keep it. So that stays um, with the pedal stool. That all stays there. The, the plumbing that I mentioned that comes out uh, from the water heater cabinet, you see that they just popped it out the wall, comes here. Again, I'll speak with the contractor. If it's all the same, uh, this will get eliminated. We'll go into the attic and then just drop down into the water heater um, just to eliminate, uh, you know, the, the piping above the window. New windows. Uh, here, we really don't do much. When, when they have private patios and backyards, we don't do much in the landscaping uh, of the backyards. So we'll just mow it down and then it's free, you know, for the tenant to make a little garden if they like. That's not going to change the rent. So we're not going to invest uh, the money. Of course, once we get all done with the project, remodel all the units on, on site, then we need a new paint job. Of course, paints, you know, peeling. Plus this color scheme doesn't work for what we do. So the entire uh, premises will get painted as well. Now you'll notice that uh, this, they have this awning, which again, probably was stylish uh, 40 years ago, not so much today. So these awnings will get eliminated. Uh, this uh, wood trim will get eliminated. And if we swing around, it'll look like this. So this unit actually uh, is already done. I cheated somewhat. We already finished two units. Um, but you'll see here that we changed out uh, the windows there. We eliminated that, had the same type of awnings and wood trim. That's all been eliminated. Um, of course, that hasn't been painted because we're not going to paint the exterior until we finish the complete project. Um, but that gives you some sense of this is what the outside looks like now in terms of windows and so forth. That is what it will look like um, within about a month or so. Um, so we're going to walk you through each phase. I wanted to show you the layout uh, and the unit as when we took it uh, back from the tenant. Um, and we're going to go through demo, choosing finished materials. Maybe we'll take you shopping with us at Floor and Decor, wherever we end up for the finished materials. Um, and so you get a real sense of the project. And then, of course, at the end, we're going to break down the expenses and the profit, let you decide if that makes sense. Chris German from the apartment dealer, wishing you positive cash flow, tenants who behave, and much protection from Uncle Sam. Till next time.